Welcome back guys to my fifth devlog of my Voxel game engine. I just want to thank you guys so much for the support on my videos recently and I hope you guys are loving them. Alright, in this video I'm going to be showing you what I've been working on this past month. I've been implementing the cache that I talked about at the end of my last devlog. You can view that video in the top right hand corner of the screen here. This allows me to have an almost infinite amount of voxels in the game engine. I can load and unload the voxels that are directly needed to render your view. Later on in the video, I'll actually show you it working with different sizes of memory on the graphics card. And I've actually managed to take the cache all the way down to one megabyte of storage. So all the voxels are being stored in one megabyte on the graphics card, which is pretty amazing. So stay tuned for that. So I'm going to bring you back to the beginning of the month and show you the interesting errors that I had while trying to implement the caching system. The first problem I faced was the whole rendering engine going completely bonkers. And that was due to the graphics card overstepping memory. So basically I was indexing off the end of the array on the GPU. And this causes on the graphics card actually the whole memory to be overwritten and this creates just garbage. So the program's memory becomes just a mess and the GPU just renders the mess. All right, so now I can show you how the cache system actually works. And the way this works is we have an array. Every voxel is stored in one dimension in the array. And what we want is we want recently accessed voxels to be here and voxels that have not been recently accessed to be here. This means that voxels on this end over here would be unloaded first. These ones here need to stay loaded. Now to do this, we could have sorted the whole array. Now that would have taken a lot of time and would not have been very efficient. So the way I've decided to do it is when a voxel gets rendered, so this voxel here gets rendered, it gets moved up to the front of the array. That means that the voxels are constantly being shifted in the array and being moved up to the front of the array if they're rendered. Voxels that are not rendered will slowly end up getting pushed out and off the back of the array. So that means we'll end up at the end here having voxels here that have not been accessed for a very long time. These are just not accessed. Whereas these voxels are currently being rendered. And as you can see, all of these are rendered and they all get moved up to the front. Whereas maybe we have a random one in here. It's surrounded by ones that got rendered. This one here that got rendered will get moved up to the front here. And that means that this one here would have shifted down, if that makes sense. Then, if we want to add new voxels to the cache, it's nice and easy. All we have to do is at the end here, where we have the voxels that haven't been loaded for a while, what we can do is we can just overwrite them with memory and have them moved all the way up to the front of the array. This means we can constantly load and unload voxels and keep this cache perfectly sorted. This whole algorithm was programmed in compute shaders that run on the graphics card. This means that the GPU is actually managing its own cache, which again speeds up the performance even more. Also, because voxels are being swapped, ones that are accessed often together bunch together in memory. This means that you actually speed up the performance due to memory in nearby areas being accessed at the same time. I then implemented a system to actually pause the cache. This means you could fly the camera around and see what was actually happening while it was loading. This is when I decided to push the cache to the max and see how much it could work with very small amounts of memory. In this video here, you can see I used a 14 megabyte cache. That is how much memory the voxels are allowed to use. And as you can see, I was also able to pause the cache to see what was happening outside of the camera's view while it runs. And with only 14 megabytes of memory, you can imagine most of the voxels outside the camera view get unloaded, as you can see here. Obviously, this is an extreme test because most of the time we're going to be using a few gigabytes of memory for the cache, not megabytes. 
the amount of memory will probably be similar to how much memory you actually have on your graphics card. Now, the amount of voxels that my caching system can actually address at one time is 64 gigabytes. So this means if you had 64 gigabytes of RAM, that's the max we can address and store as one big tree of voxels. I then decided to push this even further by shrinking the GPU cache down to one megabyte. So this means all the voxels that are currently loaded, it all has to be with inside one megabyte. As you can see, the renderer runs fine with no issues. However, the amount of voxels that are actually loaded in the frame is reduced due to the lack of memory. But we're still able to fly around and view all the voxels that we would be able to with a larger amount of cache. And there are still more than one trillion voxels that you're able to view and see as you fly around. And as you can see, when the cache is paused, outside the view, pretty much every voxel is unloaded to make sure that we have the max amount loaded in our view. All right, that's all I have to show for you guys this month. Uh, next month, my goal is probably going to be refactoring this code and implementing the CPU cache, allowing the CPU to store more memory and have a larger amount of voxels loaded than on the graphics card. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe for the next update. And I'll see you guys next month.